Uh, my name is Catherine Hayashi. I'm the Chief Financial Officer here at the Centre for Drug Research and Development. Uh, what we are is a not-for-profit that works with researchers at hospitals and universities to help advance their drug development ideas to a point where they're more commercializable or investable. Well, I did. Uh, I took the liberty of asking one of our scientists, who's um, he's a scientist that's had several years of experience both in academia and industry, and I said, well, what, do you, what do you think? And he looks at me and he says, well, do you like money? <laughs> and he was being facetious, but he was also being serious in that um, it, it, there is a difference. There are more opportunities in industry to have a job that pays you a good salary. Um, not that you can't make money as an academic, but there are, relatively speaking, fewer high-paying opportunities. Um, but I think the, the real thing is, well, what, what will make you happy and fulfilled? And the thing about being an academic is, if you really like being a free thinker, where you're free to think about what you want or think about a problem in a different way, um, that's something that is rewarded and expected in academia. You can take a long time thinking about the problem. You don't necessarily have to write anything down. Whereas in industry, while you still think, and we expect all of our people to think creatively, um, it's a very focused kind of problem solving. And you know, someone is telling you what problem to solve and suggesting a timeline where you really, really need to solve it by. So it's a different, uh, it's a different mindset. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the stuff that people find really rewarding in industry is having a project, working with a team, hitting a milestone. A lot of people, what you ended up studying in school is really only a launching point. And for example, our scientific director at CDRD, his original area of study was physics. And he ended up being uh, one of the most successful drug developers in, you know, in Canada, really which is a far, far cry from where he started off in physics. So you've got to be able to take what you know and leverage it into where you want to be. It's easy to kind of look at, um, oh, well, I wrote this paper, or I got a 95% in a course. In 20 years from now, no one will care what your transcript said. It's all about what did you lead, who did you do it with, how did you build your team, what did you accomplish? And those are, those are things that, um, that you really have to focus on, and that's the big transition from um, academic world to the real world. You know, I think there's, there's lots of smart people that know a lot of technical information about things, but what is really going to set people apart and what really makes a difference in their long-term career is these kind of soft skills about, are you a good communicator? Are you a good listener? Can you motivate people? Can you lead people? Can you solve problems with your team? And those are things that you, know, you really can only do by doing things. You have to just roll up your sleeves and get in there and do it. You know, I think part of also what people can do, whether it's you know, within your dream job or not within your dream job yet, whatever you're doing, work hard and be nice. You know, be a kind person, be helpful and work hard, and opportunities will follow. So we've interviewed lots and lots of people over the years, and, um, and truly you, what you always end up with is a group of resumes that are all pretty good, right? They've hit some minimum bar, they're pretty smart, they've published some good papers, they worked with some good professor, they've got a reasonable reference from somebody or other, and then you have the interview to see, well, who is actually the best fit? And that's what really that next level of opportunity comes down to, is fit, which is determined by the interview and by reference checks with talking to people that you worked with before. Um, and I think, especially a lot of younger students aren't used to doing a lot of interviews, and it can make a huge difference. I think what you have a chance to do in an interview is really get across, you're a good communicator, you're a good listener, um, you, can, um, you can answer questions that are complicated in a reasonable, thought out way, um, that you can talk about how you worked in a team, 
that you can talk about how you displayed leadership. Um, you want people that are going to fit into your team. You want people that are fun to work with or good people to work with or, you know, there's a kind of a, an intangible, would that person be a good person to be, uh, to be with on a daily basis? And one of my other colleagues has uh, what she calls the airport test. Could I be stuck in an airport with person? Can I be stuck in an airport with that person for four hours? And if the answer is no, they're probably not going to get hired, no matter how good your resume is. Your network is so important. I mean, the worst kind of job is the job that you have to apply for, and you're one of 100 resumes um, that, that come across someone's desk. You want to have a connection to whoever it is that's doing the hiring who already has a good impression of you because they've heard about you from somewhere else, and someone who understands kind of what you want in life and whether you might be a good fit for wherever you're going to be.